Hello and welcome to MG Midget Restoration Part 5. Today we have the engine out of the car again. And as you can see, well, can't see because the start is in the way, but as you can see now, we have an all new slave cylinder. A new slave cylinder line. And up on the shelf, we have a new master cylinder. The old one did not work. So I got them all on a kit, and it only cost me 82 bucks, which is quite a lot of money. But, um, yeah, so I got all that stuff. I have done the points gap correctly before it was just thrown in to, uh, sight, uh, to figure out the thing. I didn't measure it, I just did it by sight. This one I did measure with a few pieces of paper, because pieces of paper are four thousandths of an inch thick, and I used three, so it's, I mean four, so that was sixteen thousandths of an inch. They're supposed to be seventeen, but it's just one one thousandth of an inch is not going to make much of a difference. But yeah, these clutch parts have arrived, so now I can throw the engine back into this car, uh, but I'm going to clean everything up first. Oh, and before I throw it in, I got to fix these studs and actually put bolts in. So that's going to be fun for this exhaust because all the studs broke. My phone is really slow today. There we go. Anyway, all the studs broke on that, so I have to fix it. But other than that, the car has been okay. Uh, so I'm just going to fix all this stuff and put the engine back in. And with the engine in, I can drive the car. I can bleed the clutch. Oh, I'm going to bleed the brakes. I didn't replace the brake master cylinder, because the brake master cylinder is fine. Uh, this clutch master cylinder was stupid hard to get out, because what, the bolts are in r a really bad place. They're down there, and I didn't want to remove the whole pedal box, and that, that was just stupid hard to get out. But it is out now, so that's good. I also have to remove these radiator hoses. I got new ones, so it should be fine. And I probably have to buy engine mounts for the thing. But I'm going to put this engine back in probably tomorrow or the next day. And then I can drive the car out of here. Probably by the end of the week, by Friday or Saturday, I'll probably drive the car out of here. Have all the brakes bled, everything. Drive the car out of here. I will not have the hood on it because, well, that's a long story that I'm not going to get into. I will get into it at that part, though. But the hood is up there. So, yes, maybe by Saturday I'll be able to drive this thing out of this garage. But right now, I have to do a few things prep to fix uh, the things. Like that exhaust clamp. All the studs have broken off on that. So I have to replace those with bolts. And um, I'm going to clean this thing up a little bit. Remove those radiator hoses, as I said. And then I will be able to put the engine back in and uh, bleed everything and see if I can get the car to drive out by Saturday. And if it can drive out by Saturday, I'm going to work on the fuel situation where I'm not going to use this fuel tank that's underneath the car, by the way, because it is gone. That bo that It's completely bad. That black is varnished fuel. Because it's so old, it turned to varnish. So I'm going to get a boat gas tank and put it in. It, well, this thing. Here, this is basically how it is. It's the same setup in this 49 Plymouth that I'm going to do. I'm going to use the SU electric fuel pump. I'm going to rebuild that and just do this setup with a boat fuel tank going up to the front. That will be in another video. So, uh... Thanks for watching. I'm going to start doing this prep work now.